I walked through the damp, foggy streets, my mind swirling. So much content, so many podcasts. How do I find the best? Then it hit me, like a big blue neon sign flashing through the mist. Blueberry. All I had to do was drop the E's and go to Blueberry.com. Blueberry, the digital media interface for consumers, creators, and advertisers. A huge thank you to our progressive friends at RightWingWatch.org. That's RightWingWatch.org. They are a service of People for the American Way. To learn more about these end times, visit our website, endtimestribune.com. That's all one word, endtimestribune.com. And you can tweet us, at End Times Tribune. Now, on with the show. We are now looking at legalizing same-sex marriage. I assure you, based on the principles of Genesis, that God created them male and female, it is impossible for same-sex marriage to do what biblical marriage does, create children. He said in this statement that no one in Indiana should have the right to deny services to anyone in this state. But this is exactly what happens when a Christian baker says to a homosexual couple, I'm not going to be able to bake that cake for you. That is a service that I am compelled by my conscience and by my deeply held religious convictions. That is a service that I am not going to be able to offer to you. But they can still get pizza, right? Pizzas, I think, you know, you, you might as well keep your mouth shut. I'm not sure I would serve pizzas for a gay wedding. Well, most gays, if they're having a wedding, don't want pizzas. They want cake. But Brian Fisher just said they can't have cake. We are going to force that baker to bake that cake. I'm afraid Governor Pence is dangerously close to allowing the homosexual lobby to get the state of Indiana to compel people to bake cake and serve pizza to homos? Well, if you let them have pizza and cake, then you know what the next step will be. You're going to say you like anal sex. You like oral sex. Who doesn't? You like bestiality. You like anything you can think of, that to whatever it is. And sooner or later, you're going to have to conform your religious beliefs to the group of some aberrant thing. It, 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 it won't stop at homosexuality. The next thing you know, they're going to force Green Bay Packer fans to like the Minnesota Vikings. That's how it will be in these end times. Daily Show, CNN, GOP is not your friend. Christian right, sit tight, making other folks fight. When this hurt, how could be? No thinking, ass thinking. Watch a partial real law, even in Arkansas. Kill a Muslim or a Hindu. What's the difference? Make a deal. Fuck you. Uh oh, this means we lose. Nominee, not for me. Why choose? Testament, 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 the lie. Offer me some respite. Offer me quietude. I decline. It's the end of all days as we know them. It's the end of all days. As we know them, it's the end of all days as we know them in these end times. These end times. And these are the end times. Isn't that just wonderful? I'm the host of this hour. First get together in these end times, you may call me the Grim Weeper. And you know, Pat Robertson believes that giving cake and pizza to homos at weddings is one small step away 
from calling your little Yorkshire Terrier over to your lap and giving the dog a bone. Pizzas, I think, you know, you, you might as well keep your mouth shut. I'm not sure I would serve pizzas for a gay wedding. Well, most gays, if they're having a wedding, don't want pizzas. They want cake. Why it's the cake makers Robinson that are having the problem. But uh, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what custom you've got. It doesn't matter what holy thing that you worship and adore. The gays are going to get it. They're going to make you conform to them. You're going to say you like anal sex. You like oral sex, you, you like bestiality, you like anything you can think of that to whatever it is, and sooner or later you're going to have to conform your religious beliefs to the group of some aberrant thing. It, 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 it won't stop at homosexuality. We've got what's called polyamory. Well, what about that? Well, what about polygamy, where you've got multiple wives? How can we say that one is constitutional and the other's not? And then, as you say, uh, what's so terrible about uh, having sex with animals? Well, that's going to come next. You watch it down the road, and we'll, Christians are going to be saying, well, you're intolerant, you're intolerant, you're, you're trying to mitigate the, against these nice people who, 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 who like dogs. Uh, what's wrong with you? Now, what's wrong with somebody who wants ten wives, five wives, four wives? Didn't the ancient biblical patriarchs have numerous wives? Seem What's wrong with you? The Muslims have four wives. And uh, the latest thing, of course, we've known about it in the, uh, uh, the Quran, uh, uh, they, they don't like fornication. As a matter of fact, they'll stone people, kill them uh, for fornicating. Oh, and the good people of the Judeo-Christian tenet never did that, did they? <laughs> Looky here, boys. We got us one of those prostitutes. Oh, uh, you know what the guards are supposed to do? That's right. It's a whole lot easier on you, honey, if you just lay down and accept the fact that you're about to be pounded to death by hands full of rocks, okay? All right, everybody, get your rocks over here. We got a pile of rocks. Come on, get them. We're going to stone the whore. Who is that? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah, what he said. That was the first one. train of thought there for a moment. Pat Robertson was saying that Muslims are going to stone people who commit fornication. But at the same time, uh, uh, if a guy sees a woman and uh, he's attracted to her and he's not married to her, uh, he will say, I want to get married to you. And so they perform a quickie ceremony. She becomes his wife. They perform sexual acts together. When it's all finished, he says, uh, I don't really think I want to be married to you anymore. And he says, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times. And the marriage is terminated. No problem. <laughs> no, no offense, no foul. That's in the book. And so they go off scot-free. It is a weird world we're living in. And just ladies and gentlemen, please know that your deeply held Christian beliefs are going to be under assault in every single phase of your life. And it's going to get more intense, and it's going to be more intense than Israel. So just get ready for it. Now I, the grim weeper, do not recall much of my uh, human existence on the planet. But I, I cannot tell you if I had a strange old uncle. But that is pretty much what I imagine 
having a strange old virgin uncle explaining sex to you would be like. Once a young maiden climbed an old man's knee, begged for a story, do uncle please. Why are you single? Why live alone? Have you no babies? Have you no home? I had a sweetheart years, years ago. Where is she now, pet? You will soon know. List to my story, I'll tell it all. I believed her faithless after the war. After the war is over, after the break of morn, after the dancers leaving, after the stars are gone, the sun of many a heart is aching. If you could hear Hopes that have vanished after the war. Long years have passed, child. I have never wed. True to my lost love, though she is dead. She tried to tell me, tried to explain. I would not listen, pleadings were vain. One day a letter came from that man. He was her brother, the letter ran. That's why I'm lonely, no home at all. I broke her heart pit after the ball. After the ball is over, after the break of morn, after the dancers leaving, after the stars are If you're a, a baker, let's say, yeah, I will bake your same-sex uh, marriage wedding cake. I will bake that for you, but I am going to preach the gospel to you the whole time I'm doing it. I am going to warn you about the abominable nature of the behavior you're engaged in. I'm going to warn you about mocking God. I'm going to warn you about blaspheming the true and divine nature of true marriage. I am going to warn you about the mortal danger that you're in of suffering hellfire and eternal damnation. So he said, that would be one way to go about this thing. Just preach to him. And you let him know you're going to preach to him. You come in to get a wedding cake from me and you're a homosexual, uh, you'll get your wedding cake, but you are going to get a sermon in uh, the process. Well, the grim weeper can only see several 
problems with that. Uh, if you order a cake from a baker, who has to say it's a same-sex cake? Of course, if you get the kind with the two little grooms on top or the two little brides on top, well then, of course, the baker will no doubt figure that out. But this is a godsend, if I may use that word, for the uh, progressive bakeries out there who will cater to gay weddings. And everybody knows those cakes taste better anyway. <laughs> and yes, go ahead and, and preach to the people. That'll be good for business. <laughs> How long is that interaction anyway when you walk into a store, uh, show them your receipt, pick up your cake and leave? 45 seconds? Oh, think of the souls you'll save. <laughs> Still, one has to admire the uh, cooperative nature of the president of the uh, ultra-religious conservative American Family Association, Mr. Fisher, for coming up with a potential solution. To the situation. Uh, he wasn't quite as, uh, shall we say, understanding the last time he spoke on the he subject. He said in this statement that no one in Indiana should have the right to deny services to anyone in this state. But this is exactly what happens when a Christian baker says to a homosexual couple, I'm not going to be able to bake that cake for you. That is a service that I am compelled by my conscience and by my deeply held religious convictions. That is a service that I am not going to be able to offer to you. I'm afraid I'm going to have to deny you that service. So when Governor Pence says we are not going to allow anybody to deny anybody services in the state of Indiana, he just said the signal that he sent is we are going to force that baker to bake that cake. I'm afraid Governor Pence is dangerously close to allowing the homosexual lobby to get the state of Indiana to compel people, even though this is not what Governor Pence wants to do. I'm afraid the language is going to lead to this to compel people to provide labor against their will. What do we call it when people are compelled to provide labor against their will? Involuntary labor. What do we call that, ladies and gentlemen? That is involuntary servitude. That is slavery. That is something that is forbidden by the 13th Amendment. No, it's ironic that... Uh... Uh, Reverend Fisher would put it in that context of slavery, forcing a business to serve someone because of uh, his deeply held religious convictions forbid him to do so. Ah, that's, that's forced labor. That's slavery. Now, Suppose there's a baker there in, well, let's just say, oh, some little town in southern Indiana who belongs to a religion that has strongly held beliefs that black people should not be allowed to marry white people. Would it be all right with Mr. Fisher if that baker refused to bake a cake for that family? Would it be all right for that baker to decide his deeply held religious convictions mean that divorced couples cannot remarry or that a person who was once divorced is biblically forbidden to remarry? Would it be all right with Mr. Fisher if 
the baker decided to run down a list of biblical uh, uh, abominations with each customer? Say, that looks like barbecue sauce on your shirt. You weren't consuming pork, were you? It says in the Bible, that is an abomination. No wedding cake for you. And look at you with your mixed fabric outfit. Polyester and cotton and rayon and nylon and God knows what else. You know the Lord commanded that the mixing of fabrics was an abomination to him. No wedding cake for you. And how far should this be carried? Should police be allowed not to respond to crimes if they're being committed against people who are, in some fashion, violating Reverend Fisher's concept of what is biblically correct and what is biblically illegal? <laughs> oh, these end times are confusing, are they not? Hey, it's just CNN. GOP is not your friend. Christian right, sit tight, making other folks fight. When this heart Huckabee, no thinking, ass thinking, watch a first real law, even in Arkansas. Kill a Muslim or a Hindu, what's the difference? Make a deal, fuck you. Uh oh, this means we lose. Nominee, not for me. Why choose? Testament, testament, testament of lies. Offer me some respite. Offer me quietude. Nigh, decline. It's the end of all days as we know of. It's the end of all days as we know them. It's the end of all days as we know them in these end times. These end times. Of course, not all anti-gay bigots base their bigotry on religious superstition. Some base it on religious superstition and economics. With a baby boom generation living longer, it is very simply seen as an economical fact that we as Americans need more consumers, more producers than we do consumers. This is a problem that we're facing. We are now looking at legalizing same-sex marriage. I assure you, based on the principles of Genesis, that God created them male and female, it is impossible for same-sex marriage to do what biblical marriage does, create children. Without the procreation of children, the American society economically will fail, culturally will fail. It is not a matter of right and privilege. It's a matter of survival. So not only are we not going to let gays get married, we're not going to let elderly people get married because they can't have children. We're not going to let sterile couples get married, let's say man A, had a vasectomy years ago, and woman B may have had cancer of the uterus and had a hysterectomy. Well, they can't have children, so what business do they have getting married? <laughs> and who knew that a Republican politician running for president in 2016 might have multiple positions on an issue such as this gay rights kerfuffle in Indiana. Uh, a fine writer by the name of Brendan James in Talking Points Memo writes, Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush on Wednesday reportedly backpedaled on his support 
for Indiana's new religious freedom law protecting the right to deny certain services to gay couples. We shouldn't discriminate based on sexual orientation, Bush told a gathering of Silicon Valley donors. We shouldn't discriminate based on sexual orientation, according to audio tapes obtained by the New York Times. Well, now, that is a strikingly different tone than he took on Monday when he was interviewed by conservative talk show host uh, Hugh Hewitt. But speaking to him, he said, I think once the facts are established, people aren't going to see this as discriminatory. I think once the facts are established, people aren't going to see this as discriminatory at all. Well, uh, Bush's flip-flop came after Indiana Governor Mike Pence on Tuesday urged legislators to clarify the law, which was widely seen as a response to intervene to intense public backlash against the law. Speaking at the fundraiser on Wednesday, Bush said he would have preferred Indiana came up with a better approach in the first place. By the end of the week, I think Indiana will be in the right place, which is to say that we need in a big, diverse country like America, we need to have space for people to act on their conscience that it's a constitutional right that religious freedom is a core value of our country, the potential presidential candidate blathered nonsensically. Well... These are the end times, you know. And people are generally much more rational about their hatreds and prejudices and bigotry. Hello, I'm Donna Gale Barnyard, a frequent blogger for the Tea Party Nation website. It seems as if Satan is having his way with America, like a homosexual Boy Scout leader doing terrible things to a naked and bound and gagged, terrified young Boy Scout in the butt. And that's part of the problem. That is why the so-called gay are so successful in portraying their lifestyle as happy and healthy and normal. It's because we, good, decent, God-fearing Christian Americans that make up the vast, overwhelming majority that would have elected the Mormon heretic and that nice Mr. Ryan last November if the Kenyan usurper had not stolen yet another election, we are too decent to tell you about the things that they do that are far too disgusting to be talked about by decent people where children can hear them. Did you know that homosexuals urinate on each other? It's true. It's part of some sort of initiation process, I think. Like... Dogs marking their territory. A newly inducted homosexual must be urinated on by a circle of homosexual men. I'm not making this up. You can find instances of this all over the internet on sites that I will in no way share with you, for they are far too revolting to actually exist. Did you know that they play with each other's poop? That's also another fact that is well known among the homosexual community, but never discussed in polite society. 
So when your son comes home from his next Boy Scout jamboree, make sure to pay close attention to his fingernails. Look at them closely. Sniff them. If they smell like poop, then you will know. Better yet, pull your child from the Boy Scouts this instant. Lock them in a room until they are 18. Don't let them have any contact with the outside world except for a television that only broadcasts Christian TV networks. Then, when they're 18, don't let them join the military since Obama has already outlawed normal, upright, heterosexual, like God intended people from joining. No, sad to say, nothing but homos in the armed services now. Send your children to a nice Christian academy where they will be shaped into men by other men who know how to deal with young boys with discipline and firm, rugged manliness, where boys live with other boys, like in the rowing galleries on Grecian warships, and the only thing they will ever know is the sting of the taskmaster's whip and the burn of dirty sweat in their eyes and the constant pounding of the drums and they will learn to hate the homosexual lifestyle as the fierce disciplinarians take them and rape them over and over again while beating them and forcing them to rape each other while they watch and drink beer. Goodness, I... I think we need to turn the air conditioner up a bit. At any rate, there is scientific evidence to support everything I say. The National Institute for the Elimination of Homosexuality issued a study saying that homos are responsible for nearly all sex crimes involving children and homosexuals. And the Institute for the Blaming of All Pedophilia on the Homos cites its recent studies that prove 100% of all pedophilia is caused by homosexuals. So you can argue with me, but you can't argue with science. Now, armed with the facts, ask yourself, do you want your son coming home from the next Boy Scout jamboree soaked in urine with his fingernails reeking of poo? Or do you want your child to grow into a morally straight, normal young man who beats up sissies? I think we all know the answer to that one, don't we? This is the Grim and you've been listening to the first episode of These End Times. Don't worry. It'll all be over soon. Daily Show, CNN, GOP is not your friend. Christian Wright sitting tight and making other folks fight. When this heart hug a bee, no thinking ass thinking. Watch a harsh Sharia law, even in Arkansas. Kill a Muslim or a Hindu, what's the difference? Make a deal, fuck you. Uh oh, this means we lose. Nominee, not for me. Why choose? Testament, 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 testament of lies. Offer me some respite, offer me quietude. Nigh decline. It's the end of all days as we know them. It's the end of all days as we know them. It's the end of all days as we know them in these end times. These end times. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry.com is where listeners and podcasters come together. Check it out at Blueberry with no ease.com. And a tip of the hat to REM for the fair use, copyright use of It's the End of the World as We Know It. At least the music thereof. The lyrics were written by yours truly. And to our friends at rightwingwatch.org for the sound clips. To learn more about 
these end times, visit our website, endtimestribune.com, and tweet us at endtimestribune. That's at endtimestribune.